All right, for our blind contour drawing, okay, like I said, we can't look at where we are drawing. We are only looking at what we are drawing. So a trick to make sure that you don't accidentally cheat and look because it's really hard and it's really tempting to not cheat. We are going to take just an extra piece of paper. It could be scrap paper or anything, notebook paper, doesn't matter, whatever you have lying around. You're going to take your pencil, you're going to poke your pencil through the middle. Okay, if you're not sure where the middle of the paper is, it doesn't have to be exact, but if you are one of those people who you need things to be exact, you can fold it in half, then fold it in half again this direction, and that will give you your center. When you open it back up, it'll form that little crisscross. Again, you'll see that mine was not exactly centered, but it was pretty close, so I'm going to stick with that. And again, I'm just going to push my pencil through that hole. Some people make a mistake and they hold their pencil up here. Okay, that's not what we need. We're gonna hold our pencil underneath. Okay, so if you look at this like this, I'm holding that pencil underneath. Okay, just so that the paper is covering my hand and my drawing. Okay, again, like I said, I'm gonna draw my hand for these drawings because your hand you always have with you. They are very handy that way. Ha ha, handy, get it? Um, so the trick with drawing your hand is most people think like from when you're a kid, you put your hand flat out and then you trace it and that's the easiest way to draw your hand. Well, then it looks like an outline of a hand. It doesn't look like a drawing of a hand. So no matter what you do until you get really good at drawing your hand, which it's a difficult thing to draw. Um, if you do it flat out like this, you're going to have a really hard time. So my best advice to you is to bend your hand. Okay, this side is going to be more interesting where you can actually see all the bends and grooves because if you think of it, it's sort of like um, like a book, right? When you have just one word, you don't know very much of the story. When you have a few words put together and you have a sentence, then you have more information. You have a little bit better idea. But once you have a paragraph or even a whole chapter or a whole novel, then you fully understand the story. And drawing is the same way. The more visual information you give the viewer... So the more lines and creases and things like that that I have to draw, the more visual information I have to give that viewer, the better they're going to understand my drawing and what it is that I'm trying to show them. Okay, so I'm going to do a just a clenched fist like this. It's important to like just like we looked at with the ink bottle. Okay, depending on what direction you change it, you're going to have a different drawing. Okay, so just like my hand, if I have my hand here, I have to leave my hand in that exact position. Because if I get tired and I change it a little bit, those lines and those proportions, they change. Okay, so for example, okay, right now I can see most of this nail, but this thumb covers a little bit. But if I do this, now half of that is covered up. Okay, same thing here. I can see the bottom part of this nail. If I adjust, I can't see the bottom part. Okay, right now I can see all up here, but when I put it back here, I can't see that. So it's very important you keep your hand still, okay? That's where practicing these at home, you're going to be a little bit better off for some of you who can focus better at home uh, because you're not going to have the distractions of your friends laughing and giggling next to you. All right, so blank page in my sketchbook, paper over my pencil, holding it from underneath. And again, closed fist is what I'm going to be drawing. It's off to the side and I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to pick the part down by my wrist and there's a little crease in my wrist. It's going to come up. There's another little crease. I'm going to come up. There's like a little dent there. I'm going to trace it back up. I'm going to go up my thumb, a little crease in my thumb, another little crease, trace it up with the nail now. I'm going to go around that fingernail, back down and over to where I think my line would probably end. And I have to trace back around where that nail is, at least where I think where I just drew that nail. And then I'm going to come down, down around my thumb, down to where my pointer finger nail starts. And I'm going to do that nail. And then I'm going to come back down a little bit because there's a little crease, another little crease by my thumb. And then up here, there's another little crease. And then I'm going to trace back around that fingernail so that I can do top part of that finger and come down to where hopefully is where I meet my thumb and come back around and down where the next finger is I'm gonna do the top of that finger come down there's a little crease up the bend of the next finger go around this fingernail okay I don't have the whole top of that fingernail so I'm gonna kind of show the palm there trace back around where that should be and down for the next finger again the palm covers a little bit a little crease
crease, next fingernail comes around and down, trace around that, back to where now I think I'm at the pinky. I'm gonna need to draw on that side of that finger where I think that ends. I'm gonna trace back around. Should I get that pinky now? Hopefully I'm in the right spot. Down, in for the crease, up, down, little crease there, down around to the pinky nail, around that fingernail, back up to where I think it started, back around to where I think this crease is. You're starting to be able to see a little bit of my paper and I'm looking at the camera every once in a while to make sure I'm still on camera. And this comes down and around to the wrist, crease at the wrist, crease at the wrist, crease at the wrist. There is a blind contour drawing. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Can you see where some of the things are? If you noticed, I went really slowly. I have the creases in my wrist, but my wrist is too wide. Okay, but we come up through here. This part's pretty good. I do my thumbnail, not so bad. Okay, because I was like this, right? Um, I had to come down. I went around here and I had to trace back up. I hopefully would have been here. And then I went down, went around here. I went back up to do this fingernail. Okay, back around. I tried to finish the top of this finger and then I traced back up to come down to where I thought this was so I get that separation between the fingers. And then went back down. There was a little crease here in my finger. Went down, did the fingernail here. Um, I think I had a little crease here for the, for the pad of my thumb right here. Back around here. This part I think is actually pretty good. Okay, then up to here, traced back this line. Came around here, there's a little creases in my pinky right in this area. That's what I was trying to do here. Did my pinky nail. Um, again, if this had been better lined up, that line would have completed this finger back around, back down to here. So this was a blind contour. Okay. And blind contour is just that it's blind. Remember okay, you can't look, it's just the edges and outlines of things. Um, you cannot pick up your pencil. You cannot erase. We didn't do any of that. And I was only looking at what I was drawing, which was my hand. I did not look at the paper. We were insured of that because I had this covering up the entire time, right? So this is blind contour. Yours is going to look silly. Mine looks silly. I've been doing this for longer than you've been alive. Okay. I started taking drawing classes in sixth grade and that was, oh goodness. I don't know. It's been 20 years since I graduated high school. So you do the math on that. It's been a long time. Okay. So if mine looks silly and this is the first time you're doing this, yours is definitely going to look silly. So be okay with that. Realize that it's going to look silly. What I'm looking for is not, is your drawing perfect? What I'm looking for is, are you following the principles of contour drawing? Does it look like you picked up your pencil anywhere? Guess what? If you had had a finger where you had your finger here and then you have this floating fingernail, guess what? You picked up your pencil because this is floating in the middle of your drawing. It's not connected to anything else. If it's not connected to anything else, you picked up your pencil and you broke the rules. Don't break the rules. Okay. So we don't want that. You notice here. See, yes, you can see it in the camera. Um, there's still a line here. I can see where this was erased. If you erase something, you broke the rules. If it looks rushed and looks like a symbol of your hand, that means again that you didn't go slowly and look carefully and drawing the edges and outlines. You were drawing a symbol of your hand, not your actual hand. I want to see what you can do to draw your actual hand. If you follow the rules, you're going to be successful. You're going to get full credit. It's all good. What we're doing right now is practice. It's leading up to our actual finished value drawings. Okay, but all of these are steps in the ladder and you can't go from step one to step 15 like that. Okay, you have to go little by little and you got to trust me. Okay, if you trust me with this, we're all going to get there. If you automatically think, nope, I can't do it. I can't draw. I'm going to be terrible at this. Then guess what? You probably are going to be terrible. So don't let yourself be terrible. Trust me, trust the process and we're going to get there together. Next, we're going to look at pure contour.